Hello, welcome to another tutorial by me, Geisel's Guy 65 and today I'll be showing something new that I just found and I think you'll really enjoy it. It's called texture splatting and it's a really easy way to get good results with textures and you can kind of just paint them onto whatever you're using without putting them in certain faces or anything. It's really useful and can help with detailed projects such as environment and mapping. So let's get started. Start out, just add a plane, size it up a little bit if you want, and then split the screen by right clicking, split screen, and that divides it into two new windows. Change this one to the UV image editor, enter edit mode, and then hit U to unwrap. And now you have the UV of this object over here. The first thing you want to do is make a new image. It can be any size. I'm just going to leave it with its defaults. And then you can go back into object mode. Go here into the editing panel. Or the texturing panel, sorry. And add a new material. Then you can go over into this little leopard print textures and add three of them. Then each one's going to be an image, and you're going to be loading first your main image, your stench, your stencil, which is this black texture, and then your third image. So first off, I'm going to load some grass. We can do a pathway. I got my grass, rename that one grass. My stencil. And then my dirt. Alright, now that you have all three all three textures, you can go back into the ball or the materials button. And then over here in this far right hand where it says textures, you want each one under map input to be on UV. Let's go through each one from on UV. And for the stencil, you don't you want it not only in UV, but also stencil and no RGB with black as that color. And then UV for the last one. And now you're ready to get painting. Next you can go in the shaded mode and then you want GLSL with enabled which in 2.48 which I have is right here. The Blender GLSL materials button. There are certain versions, you pull down that bar like I did, and it'll be right there. So make sure you have that enabled. And if you don't, then you won't really be able to see it. So have that enabled, and then you actually will be in texture mode. Alright, so now you see texture showing up. You don't need this window anymore. and then you switch from object mode to texture painting and all you really need is the white and the black colors each one represents a different texture the dirt or the grass and then there's also different settings for your paintbrush down here such as opacity, size, fallout which is like how hard it is around the edges where you want it a either a perfect circle <coughs> or kind of fade it out and spacing is like you want a constant brush or you don't want to make a texture and then another texture kind of like a gap in between each click or drag so then you can just start out painting and the top texture is going to be white and the bottom one's going to be black so now you can see 
or sorry, the top texture is black, the bottom one is white. If you look closely, you can see that that brown line is starting to appear, and that's my ground. I'll undo those and make it a little bit bigger. Turn up the size. And then you can see a path. Very useful if you want to make maps or environment, maybe some buildings. And then just texturing certain things like a wall. You could put opacity on and then maybe make a worn out brick wall. Have one texture brick and the other one just some wear and tear. And then, of course, you got opacity, so now you can like see it really well, but you burn it down more. It's kind of like faded. You have to go back and forth a lot to see it. They're kind of mixed. Size, of course, is just bigger, smaller paintbrush. And then fall off, complete fall off would be really faded like that. And no fade off, or no fallout would be Super faded, sorry. Full fall off would be. Full fall off would be a perfect circle like that. And then the lower the fall off, the hazier it gets around the edges. And then the spacing, that just. You can see it's taken like a break in between each time it puts that texture down. I usually have it at zero, so it's just a constant stream. And then that's just like a really nice way to get a map or something. And I'm going to plan to use that in my game instead of previous texturing that I showed you. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more tutorials in soon. School just got out, so now I can focus on Blender finally. That really tied me down, and especially my video my video program. I'd really appreciate it, appreciate it if you could subscribe. Hopefully I'd like to become a YouTube partner and use some of that money to get better software and get you better tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this and it was helpful. Please subscribe and enjoy.